What happens when a country claims it can defend not only its skies, but the space just above them? That question resurfaced after Russia announced that the 1st Regiment of its S-500 Prometheus Air and Missile Defense System has officially entered combat duty. The declaration, made during a defense ministry meeting, marked a milestone Moscow has been signaling for years. This was no longer about testing or future promises. According to Russian officials, the S-500 is now operational. The significance of this announcement the significance of this announcement does not lie in an immediate change on the battlefield in Ukraine. Instead, it reflects how Russia is thinking about the next phase of modern warfare. While much attention remains fixed on drones, artillery, and missile exchanges, Moscow is focusing upward toward altitude, trajectory, and early interception. The S-500 is often described as the successor to the S-400, but that comparison can be misleading. While the S-400 is designed to engage aircraft, cruise missiles, and some ballistic threats within the atmosphere, the S-500 is built for a different mission profile. Russian sources describe the system as capable of engaging targets in near space, a zone between the upper atmosphere and low Earth orbit. This places the S-500 firmly in the strategic defense category. It is not intended to intercept drones or protect frontline units. Its role is to counter high-altitude, high-speed threats, ballistic missile warheads, advanced reconnaissance platforms, and potentially hypersonic weapons that operate beyond the reach of conventional air defense. Like infrastructure strikes that target logistics rather than physical structures, the S-500 is designed to shape the battle space rather than fight within it. Declaring the S-500 on combat duty carries operational weight. It suggests trained crews, radar coverage, command integration, and readiness within Russia's air and missile defense network. In other words, the system is expected to function under real conditions, not merely exist on paper. This announcement also aligns with broader efforts to reorganize Russia's aerospace defense structure. The emphasis is increasingly on integration, linking missile defense, early warning, and air defense into a single-layered architecture. The S-500 is intended to sit at the top of that structure, covering threats that pass above or through lower defensive layers. Modern threats are moving higher and faster. Ballistic missiles travel on steep trajectories. Hypersonic weapons glide at the edge of the atmosphere. High-altitude platforms provide targeting, surveillance, and battle management. Traditional air defense systems are designed to intercept threats once they are already descending toward defended areas. The S-500 is intended to challenge that logic by pushing interception earlier and higher. By doing so, it expands the battle space vertically and forces attackers to account for interception long before weapons reach their terminal phase. This does not replace conventional air defense systems. It adds depth and complexity to the defensive environment. The war in Ukraine has turned the Patriot air defense system into a symbol of Western military support. Patriot batteries have repeatedly intercepted ballistic and cruise missiles, protecting cities and critical infrastructure under real combat conditions. However, Patriot is designed for point defense within the atmosphere. It protects specific locations during the final phase of an incoming threat's flight. The S-500 is intended to operate above that layer. Rather than defending individual sites, the S-500 aims to contest the airspace above them. In theory, it could intercept threats earlier in their trajectory, reducing pressure on systems like Patriot below. This does not imply guaranteed superiority, nor does it suggest proven dominance. It reflects a different defensive philosophy, localized interception versus vertical depth, HIMARS has reshaped the battlefield in Ukraine by enabling precision strikes deep behind the front lines. Ammunition depots, command posts, and logistics hubs have been struck with speed and accuracy. Its effectiveness lies not only in the launcher, but in the broader system that supports it. 
intelligence, targeting data, communications, and airspace access. Yet recent incidents have shown that High Mars is not immune to interception. On December 20th, Russian forces reported that two High Mars rockets were intercepted and destroyed by Book M2 air defense systems in separate engagements. The Book M2, a medium-range system originally designed to counter aircraft and cruise missiles, has increasingly been used to engage high-speed rocket threats when conditions allow. These interceptions were notable, not because High Mars had never faced resistance before, but because they demonstrated how layered air defense can disrupt even modern Western strike systems. High Mars relies on speed and surprise. Once those advantages are reduced, survivability narrows. In that context, the comparison with the S-500 becomes logical. If a medium-range system like Book M2 can, under certain conditions, intercept High Mars rockets in their terminal phase, then it is no surprise that a strategic, high-altitude system such as the S-500 would pose an even greater challenge to the broader strike architecture supporting HIMARS operations. The S-500 is not designed to intercept HIMARS rockets directly. Its role sits higher in the kill chain, protecting command nodes, radar assets, and strategic rear areas that enable long-range precision strikes in the first place. These developments reinforce a core principle of Russia's air defense doctrine. No single interception is decisive, but cumulative pressure matters. From Book M2, intercepting high Mars rockets, to S-400 engaging aircraft and cruise missiles, and now to the S-500 entering combat duty at the highest layer, the objective is not perfection. It is to steadily reduce an adversary's freedom of action across altitude, range, and timing. The S-500 is not a silver bullet. It is the logical extension of a layered defense system already being tested under combat conditions. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.